The 2024 GMC Acadia is a massive vehicle compared to the 2020. So what we're going to do here, going to compare just the design changes because they are pretty significant here. And also the powertrain is relatively cool in the new 2024 Acadia. But before we compare the old one to the new from a front side rear and the interior, which desperately needed an update, which is good that they did here. Let's talk about some of the spec and tech from this article. Again, from Car and Driver, linked down below in the description. So this is right here, the GMC Acadia for the 2024 model year. It grows significantly, approaches Yukon proportions, which I don't know if that's a good thing. Like, I don't want all the cars to just keep growing and growing. We're gonna have to uh, redesign all the roads to fit all these big vehicles that's coming out right now because everything seems to just be getting bigger and bigger. Along with the new 328 horsepower Turbo 4, the redesigned Acadia has a roomier and ritzier three-row interior with a slick 15-inch touchscreen. So its wheelbase and over length grows by 8.4 inches and 10.6 inches respectively. And that is not a small jump. Every model now has a 328 horsepower turbocharged uh, 2.5 liter four cylinder and can tow up to 5,000 pounds. You can also get it with front wheel drive or all wheel drive. And in this package, it is an SUV always go with an all-wheel drive. So you have a boxier exterior that makes it look more truck-like. You can see that it feels uh, like this design is uh, now more connected to the rest of the lineup of GMC. I really like what they did here with this uh, overall, over the, the refresh in general. The center console has more storage space thanks to the awkward shift buttons being, remo being moved to a column-mounted shifter. And I think this is I guess this is then the shifter right here, this big fat stock that we have uh, right next to the steering wheel. You have an 11 inch gauge cluster and the dashboard is dominated by a vertical uh, vertically oriented 15 inch um, infotainment screen. But it looks like we still have the physical buttons integrated with some digital stuff up here. So it's very uh, interesting integration of the interior. So the bottom of the center display also has static HVAC controls with a mix of touch uh, functions and toggle switches. These were the ones where I just showed you right here. Up to nine exterior cameras. So this is packed with a bunch of new technology. You can read all about that here if you want to. Available with Super Cruise as well. And the full-size GMC Yukon is now, they have the same wheelbase at 120.9 wheelbase. So the Acadia, the wheelbase of this is the same as the Yukon. I don't know if that makes sense to me. Why would you have two um, identical wheelbases in their SUVs? But I'm sure this is still gonna sell because it is you know, an SUV and it is a GMC. These are selling pretty well, so I think this is not gonna be any, any different. You have 80% more space behind the third row and the old four-cylinder had 228 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque while the V6 pumped out 310 horsepower and 270 pound-feet. That was the old uh, engines and drivetrains for the um, Acadia. Now, every Acadia has a turbocharged four-cylinder, 2.5 liter, but it comes with a lot more power. So it's powerful than the, more powerful than the old V6. It now has 328 horsepower and 326 pound-feet of torque, which I think sounds great, but it's, as I said, it's also a much bigger vehicle these days. You have an eight-speed automatic instead of the old nine-speed, and as I said, you can get it front or all-wheel drive. The 84 model also has exclusive all-wheel drive system with a twin-clutch rear axle. And since the 84 is a more off-road capable version, it also sits about an inch taller than the rest of the Acadias. Unique 84 hardware includes 18-inch wheels mounted on Goodyear Wrangler Territory all-terrain tires. These are the tires we're talking about and wheels. I think it looks great. And a, specific, and a specially tuned suspension. Now the Denali version still comes with a flat, flashy grille, which is now satin instead of chrome. Well done, GMC, because chrome is way 90s. We don't usually have that anymore, but it can be had with big 22-inch wheels. Previously, you can only get the Denali with 20-inch wheels. Again, it is a bigger vehicle, so I think 22s will probably look really cool on this. I'm not sure if these are probably the 22s here because these are the press photos. Now, we don't know how much the 2024 Arcadia will cost, but the elevation base one right now starts at just under 40K, and this being, you know, a lot more tech, 
it's bigger, it's new, it's probably going to be above 50 grand for the Denali trim. So with that said, let's jump into Photoshop and have a look at what is going on with the new Acadia right here. So up top, I'm gonna do the 84 comparison. So up top, we do have the old 84 or the current 84, which I still think looks very good because we have these beefy tires. These look maybe 17 inches and now we have eight 18s, I believe they have on the Goodyear uh, territory tires on the 2024 model. But I do like the staticness that we have in this, but it still looks like the old uh, design language of GMC. So this was definitely due for a refresh when it comes to the overall exterior styling and also specifically the interior, which we're definitely gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna show you the old one and just how dated that looked. But I do like that the 84 and the old one had all this plastic in the bottom reducing some of this mass. Now the new one, this looks like a Yukon to me and that is a good thing because I want to have a strong brand identity across the entire lineup. You also have some Canyon in here and I just reviewed the AT4X Canyon. It's a fantastic truck that's coming up on the Sketch Monkey channel later this week. So go and check that out when it drops. But what I do like about this front end is that we do have a little bit more styling since this is a smaller uh, I mean, theoretically, not technically, smaller than the Yukon. That means that we could have a little bit more styling. The designers could have a little bit more fun uh, with some curvatures, some chamfers. You can see these beautiful chamfers right here, for example. This is a gorgeous touch. We also have a nice chamfer housing the top part of the headlight. I'm glad that they kept the headlight up here. We still have the typical C-shape for GMC intact with this big LED. And I also like that this LED has some uh, dynamic feeling to it because you can see it's thin here and then it goes in and becomes thicker at this part, creating some movement in the LED. And you have the same thing here, thick here all the way down and then when we go to the base it becomes thinner and thinner as we go closer to this corner in the, in the very base. Looking great, adding some interesting features to analyze in this design. And you can see that the grill, I, I'm not sure about this grill since this is the 84, uh, 84 trim, I want to have everything be blacked out. I don't want to have these silver pieces in the middle. Uh, this is probably something I would uh, change if I were to get this AT4 and also black out this center portion of the logo, what the frame that houses the logo. Because as you can see down low we have this uh, trim that I want to have in the grill. So this lower grill, I want to have the same trim or finish that we have in the lower part up here in the main grill as well. And then you have the red tow hooks, you have the skid plate, this being the one inch uh, lifted the 84 and you have this Goodyear all-terrain tires which look fantastic on this trim as well. Some fog lights down here again housed with a nice beautiful chamfer. I like when uh, it feels like chamfers are coming back. Now we had a trend for a while where everything was supposed to be exactly flush with the surface of the body. We didn't have any sort of chamfers like we have here for example or down here. The pieces just just set flush inside of the, the surfacing of the metal work, but it feels like chamfers are coming back and I'm really glad to see that because I'm a huge fan of chamfers. It makes for a more uh, upscale design in my opinion, but comparing these two, I think you can clearly tell that this front end also was in need of a refresh and I think they did a great job with the front end down here on the 2024. Now looking at the side view, this is a completely new vehicle. Wheelbase, everything is a lot bigger you can't really see that here. Maybe you can if you look at the wheelbase here. Feels like we have a lot more overhang in the 2020 model than we have in the 2024. You can see the shorter overhang right here in the back. This creates a lot more space for the interiors. And we also, they removed this piece of bodywork that cuts in, making it look almost like a, if you just have a look at this area here. If we zoom in here, this looks almost like a Ford Explorer to me, specifically when we have this body cutting this window and this window and have a separation between it. But now we have one full window with the greenhouse going all the way back here before it cuts into the deep pillar. I think it looks great. It simplifies the, desi the, the design and we also have a much simpler rear end which we're going to have a look at right after this. I also like that we have this piece, this line. We have a connection now. Have a look at this. From the front end going into the side and then dipping right here, looking very cool. If we were to continue this line, it still has a connection right here with the rear bumper. So to me, this is a this is a good looking 
uh, SUV. It, it looks great. It's simplified and it still has a lot of GMC uh, DNA in its design. And again, I do like that we have these off-road tires, wheels and tires set up. And have a look at the front end, just how vertical this is, making it look, as they said, uh, almost truck-like with, with specifically this front end that we have on the 2024 Acadia. Now, looking at the rear view before we jump in to the interior of the new Acadia, we do have a lot simpler design in the rear end. You can see, for example, how this uh, detail here on the 2020 model sticks out in a very strange way, this taillight. I kind of want to just cut it right here, remove this piece and just have it be a lot simpler than what we have here. This looks like something that is uh, the designers maybe didn't intend to, then the engineers come in and said we need to have a piece there to add whatever sensors and uh, whatever. So they just added this piece that sticks out weirdly uh, on the Acadia. And then you have a shoulder line dipping downwards before it comes back and then dipping down again in front in the front the axle. It's a very interesting design. I do like the LEDs that we had in the 2020, but looking at the new one and just how much cleaner, it was so much uh, it feels a lot more upscale, this new design, because have a look at the chamfer that went around down here, for example, all the way down, very low. I would like to raise this up and have a cleaner bumper. So we have this line at the bottom being up here. And that's pretty much what they did in the uh, 2020. We, we don't have a, uh, you know, a, a deep chamfer that goes down something like this now, like, like we had in the 2020 model. Now we have a very clear, defined, Li uh, limit between or border between the top half of the graphics and the lower section and that is this line that I talked about that I wanted to raise up in the 2020 model. Now we have a lot of horizontal lines. You can see that the taillights are squishier, they're stretched out and what this does it makes it look way wider than it did in the 2020. You can clearly see that here just how much graphic plays in when it comes to making a planted car and having these all horizontal lines that we have going across here, creating this very wide look. And looking at the very bottom, I do like that another trend that feels, I hope that it's coming back, is that we are starting to get more exposed uh, exhaust pipes. Five years ago, again, we were in this trend where flush elements sit, you know, the headlights, taillights sit all flush with the bodywork, no chamfers. Chamfers are coming back and it feels like exhaust pipes um, visible like this are also a trend that is coming back. And I think it looks great having quad, uh, you know, squarish taillight, uh, tail pipes down there at the bottom. You have the reflector lights in here. You have a nice, clean, subtle chamfer right underneath the, the taillights. Beautifully done. We have a nice housing as well with this chamfer going down here for the housing of the license plate and this black piece. I also like that we have this black housing for the taillights themselves. And you can see just how much cleaner this section is compared to the old one that has, this, again, this weird piece of the taillight sticking out into the shoulder line up there. This looks so much better. And also the shoulder line itself now has a connection right here. We can see that maybe in the side view a bit clearer. Yeah, we can. So we have this line right here connecting out to the corner, then coming back in the lower section. I totally forgot to talk about the shoulder line. And you can see how it dips downwards on the old one, which was, it wasn't, it didn't look bad, but it still looks a lot better in my opinion to have the shoulder line like this sitting further up. You have this muscle now in, in the rear fender. You also have a muscle here in the front fender and this beautiful line at the bottom as well sticking down. So last but not least, this is the biggest, um, I mean, refresh, I would say, or, or the bit, the piece that needed the, the refresh the most was definitely this, this interior. So as you can see, the old one, the 2020, the current one, this is 2023 model year and it looks like it is from the early 2000s or something like that with all these curvatures and big, uh, you know, volumes that we have in the interior. It feels very dated, this design, and this trim doesn't really help with that, even though I do like this uh, brushed steel trim that we have looking like. But this piece right here definitely feels dated and the housing for the gauge cluster also feels, uh, you know, it feels good, it looks good. We have a head up display as you can see and we also looks like we have a, did is I'm sure, I'm not sure if this is digital or not. We do have some physical uh, tachometer on the sides, but overall these buttons and dials, everything here with these big bulky chamfers, this is very typical 
late to uh, early 2000s design that is definitely something that needed a refresh and i think they did a fantastic job updating the interior of the 2024 acadia down here just have a look at the steering wheel we'll start with that this again looks extremely dated the new one has this chiseled stately feel to it with some nice chamfers here in the middle as well smaller centerpiece on the steering wheel and also nice textures and leather wrapping around here with this gloss black in the bottom you have the super cruise uh, i'm not sure if you have the leds in this like we have in the escalade and have a look at the uh, integration of the gauge cluster now you can see that it is just a screen back here a static rectangular screen but what they did with the interior here the designers well done by the way they added this cap to it and that is all I ask for when we have interiors like this. When everything turns into screens, I just ask for a simple little hat that sits above the gauge cluster and that's it. It makes it feel so much more welcoming for some reason to me to have a housing for the gauge cluster, even though the gauge cluster itself is not in this case very well connected to the housing, but it still feels a lot better. I'm not sure what's going on here though. This is definitely something that uh, I think uh, they could have definitely done better. It feels like this piece is just cut off here abruptly. Instead, we could have made something like this to go down on the, on the right side of the infotainment screen and have some connection to it like this, instead of just cutting it off like we have in this case. But moving further down, you do have this big 15 inch, I do believe this was, but look at that down here at the bottom. We do have the uh, AC controls being toggles so you still have physical toggles for that this looks like to be the volume control and i'm not sure if these are actually physical buttons here or if these are part of the the screen itself i do believe they're part of the screens looks like you have heated and ventilated seats in this car as well fantastic but the main thing here is to have the physical buttons for the uh, the climate control settings and then the housing for everything if, i think Adding a 15 inch screen to this is not easy to have it be well integrated, but I do think they did a good job overall with this interior of the new GMC Acadia.